what are the upsides of, of this appointment should it happen for you? Well, I think he's a perfect appointment for the job. You know, Tony Abbott is someone who's prime minister for two years. And within two years, he struck three trade deals on behalf of Australia with China, South Korea and Japan, three of Australia's major trading partners. The United Kingdom hasn't actually struck a trade deal since it joined the European Econ Economic Community in 1973. We need someone with good experience like Tony's got. And I think he's a perfect addition to the team. And the fact that he's being rubbished in the media for his allegedly, and I must emphasize allegedly, misogynistic remarks is completely wrong. You know, this is a man who campaigned for Aboriginal rights to be, uh, to be enshrined in the Australian constitution. This is a man who promised a referendum on single sex marriage. And had he been prime minister, I'm sure he would have seen that through. This is a man with experience. He's a friend of the United Kingdom. He's got great ability in the, in the field that we need him for, and he should be championed and welcomed into our fold. So, Christine Jardine, um, for, for many people, they're looking at him. He, he maybe is a bit of an unreconstructed Aussie who no doubt played to his base a little bit like Donald Trump does. No big deal. But actually, uh, if you hear Mr Habib there, the fact that the former prime minister of a close ally wants to work with the UK and has necessary experience, then that is a big deal. I think that's a bit unfair to Australians, if you don't mind me saying so, and um, referring to him in, in that way, making that remark about a reconstructed Aussie. The fact remains that this is um, a controversial suggestion, that his views, as they've been expressed, are controversial. And uh, to me, it's summed up by um, the gentleman that you interviewed um, in the package who said that the Conservative government, this Conservative government wants its Brexit favouring friends around it, and it doesn't actually... Nothing else really matters. And I don't think that's good enough. Our reputation in this is important. And who is dealing with things is important. And I think that this is something the government really should rethink. What about those views then on uh, when he won the election in 2013, um, uh, Ben Habib, he promised uh, to create a military-led patrol against asylum seekers arriving by boat. He wanted increasing military engagement in the Middle East. What does this tell us about the politics of this government that they see him as fit for opposition? Yeah. Well, look, there's absolutely nothing wrong about policing one's own borders. What the Australian position on illegal immigrants is that if they try to get into Australia illegally, they will never be welcomed again. It's not that Australia doesn't welcome genuine asylum seekers. It's that they do not want them there illegally. And that's a perfectly sensible proposition to hold. And the idea that this man should be vilified because of some alleged uh, allegations or misogynistic comments back in 2012, which are completely unsubstantiated, which he denies, this man has got a perfect uh, track record in establishing trade agreements at a time that the United Kingdom needs someone with his skills. And it is, it is absolutely so consistent with the Liberal Democrats and Labour kind of woke dictatorial liberalism that they wish to rubbish his reputation before he has a chance to do what's right for the United Kingdom. We need him on our team. He's clearly pro-UK, and I can't see any reason why he shouldn't be part of those trade, trade talks. In fact, I think he ought to be part of our inner circle. He's an absolute shoe-in for the job. Well, Christine Jardine,